Hi, I'm Tilly. My artist name is Tilly Trevitt. Um, I was born in the UK and I grew up here. Um, I was specifically for most of my childhood in Oxfordshire slash Buckinghamshire, um, in just outside of a small village. Um, so it was very like rural, um, countryside, um, very green, um, and I would say that that's definitely a factor in why I'm so drawn to nature as a focus in my artwork, um, particularly in my, like when I first got into painting again, um, I did a lot of nature inspired works, um, that I called flowerscapes, um, and also a lot of, um, I also focus a lot in my line drawings on, um, flowers and fruit, so like botanical, botanical drawings, um, and I guess like fruit still life as well, and I think that that is partly because of, um, you know, growing up surrounded by nature and being able to be in the air and the sun and, um, now that I think about it as well, I wonder if the the vegetables is because my mum used to have a vegetable garden. Um, so maybe that's a factor as well. Um, she also is from New Zealand. And so I have a lot of family there as well who I've visited over the years. Um, and I think, again, that probably feeds into my love of nature and like inspiration through nature. Um again like connection to to being in the sun and being in the sea um yeah I would say yes as well as being inspired by um as well as having been informed I think by like growing up with such a close relationship to the natural world um I would say also in general like um a lot of my work is very nostalgic um and is like about connecting or reconnecting with my inner child um and I guess like capturing that carefree probably like pre pre 11 maybe earlier um kind of childhood um sense of like freedom when you're playing I was late diagnosed with ADHD in 2022 um, when I was, I think, 25. And um, I feel like that's actually a big part of why my art is so focused on like connecting with my inner child and inner teenager um I think I I grew up definitely just like feeling that I was kind of out of place in the world and like like had to pretend I don't know I think I guess I felt like I felt like something was wrong with me um and that I was just, like, different from everyone around me, and I had to hide that, um, and I assume it was, you know, because I had undiagnosed ADHD, so it was actually just that my brain worked differently, um, but I think, like, it makes me sad looking back, um, um, to when I was particularly, like, an older child, um, and like like teenager as well, I think I just felt like I felt like I was like secretly just like there was secretly like something really wrong with me um and um, yeah, I think my work like kind of tries to reclaim that like I think it's really easy to look back on childhood um with like a romantic 
kind of lens or just on the past in general um and I do think you know I was lucky to definitely have like some really beautiful moments um particularly when I was like a lot younger um like maybe like pre pre like nine or so um yeah and so I think um I think that's why a lot of my work is just like strives to be very like free and happy and um childish I guess it's like and nostalgic as well it's kind of like reclaiming um that time but like differently because it's like reclaiming it from the perspective of like okay now I've been diagnosed with ADHD like now I understand a lot more like why my brain works the way it works I think like I always kind of thought up until that point and kind of even after diagnosis as well um that like there was something I was just doing wrong and like why couldn't I just like find it easy to do these things that other people could do so easily and like why did it seem like so much work um because it's not just like the work of um like it's not just the work of doing the thing it's also like the work of like trying to do the thing the same way other people would do it because I think it's one thing being able to like complete you know x task but it's a completely different thing to try and complete x task like the way that um other air quotes normal people would do it um yeah so I I feel like my um undiagnosed ADHD is a really really big driver of my work and um factor in my work like I I would say that my work primarily focuses on um neurodivergence identity um divine love particularly like also the divine feminine um the inner child uh inner teenager my biggest influences um Basquiat is a really big one um I I've just always found that his work really speaks to me even like kind of I think when I studied art at school um that was he was really one of the first artists that I really connected with and I I guess I just felt seen by his work um I have ADHD um and it just I find the way he juxtaposes imagery and words and um experimented with like different surfaces and combining different materials and also like reclaimed a lot of more like kind of like childish um styles of uh, and techniques um I found that really powerful and I still find that really powerful um and I would say I that heavily influences my practice um yeah as I said before you know a lot of my work is mentioned well, as I said before, um, a lot of my work is about reconnecting with my inner child and experimenting, and also it it's also about recording um my what's going on in my brain, um, recording like my often just very very busy ADHD brain, um, and sometimes like trying to most of the time trying to just like get the stuff out and um have it represented on canvas or paper and I think like using a lot of different mediums um and combining different materials really helps me with that um another really big influence is um Georgia O'Keeffe so I do a lot of like um kind of I never know how you pronounce this word. Is it yonic? But, like, basically, um, I guess, like, kind of almost, like, sensual fruits. Um, And obviously she was famous for, for, you know, her flowers. um, And they've been compared to vagina paintings or vulva paintings, I guess. 
Um, and I, I can kind of see that in a lot of my, um, fruits, like I, I do a lot of like cut open ones and usually it's that kind of that specific shape. Um, and I, I only, I only made that connection really recently. Um, I've always loved her work and been inspired by it. Um, but I couldn't really pin down why I kind of just thought maybe the influence was in the fact that I do botanical drawings, um, that are often quite like minimal in style and, um, like quite fluid and, um, then I realised actually I don't think it's just that area that it permeates into. Um, there's also an Australian artist called Kendon. I think it's I think it's pronounced Kendon, um, and not Kendon, uh, whose gallery I went to, um, in Sydney, which was amazing, um, and I really love his style because it's just very colourful. Again, he like plays. Sorry, my chair's squeaking. I'm just gonna. Um, uh, he plays with like just really bright colors, and again, it's like quite like a like f almost childlike um type of expression sometimes. Uh, and he like writes on canvases, and it's abstract in just a very fun way. But also, it's kind of like um it's somewhere in between abstract and figurative and that's where I would place myself as well um so I would say those are the three biggest Basquiat, Georgia O'Keeffe and Kendon. So <laughs> there are a lot of challenges obviously um it's it's an amazing career but there are also a lot of challenges um you know like balancing the financial side breaking into the industry those are those are bloody difficult um but I would say um the biggest one for me because it affects my day-to-day -day and like it affects me the most frequently like I see every day like it's an issue that I face every day I would say is um like juggling the different parts of the job and figuring out what to prioritize and this is definitely heavily influenced by my ADHD like one of the classic things is um having difficulty prioritizing <clears throat> tasks and I think with being an artist there's so many different things that you could be focusing on so um obviously there's making art which already within that for me at least there's a lot of different things to balance like as I just mentioned I've got all these different projects on the go all these different things I want to focus on um so there's that but then there's also the social media side and um applying to opportunities like exhibitions and grants and um residencies and stuff you know um and then there's also you know stuff like managing your materials um and probably like a million other things that I can't think of right now um but I mean it it is something that you learn with time that I've been learning with time like I've figured out better at least like how to how to prioritize stuff and yeah but I would say that that is the biggest challenge for me as an artist with ADHD, um, is definitely, um, balancing all of the different jobs and hats that the artist has to wear. So the advice I would give to my younger self is to create, to just keep creating and not worry about what other people think about it or whether it's, you know, good or bad in your mind. I think the important thing is just to like flex your creative muscle and also I think not to rule yourself out of things like before you've even tried like don't not apply to things just because you you don't think you're good enough for them um don't like yeah I guess like don't don't re don't reject yourself before you've given the world a chance because like they might you know someone 
someone else who's whether they're you know hiring or like looking through applications for um an exhibition or something like I think you should like you should just go for it you should just take the risk um and you should just try it because you never know and I do really believe that quote that um you miss 100% of the shots you don't take because you know the chance the chance is zero <laughs> if you don't do it um and yeah sure it might be really small still even if you do do it but i think to to believe in yourself and to like push yourself to do it even if you're scared or you know feel unworthy I think that's a really brave thing to do and eventually I do think it you know pays off have I ever tried any unconventional mediums or techniques um yes I have definitely um I love exploring um I love exploring stuff when I'm creating I love experimenting um I love using like kids craft supplies um especially and mixing those sometimes with like more professional in air quotes um mediums um like oil pastel and paint um with you know stickers um I'm struggling to think of the glitter um chalk that kind of thing felt tip pen um I also like, um, yeah, I like add, I like seeing what I can add, really. Um, I really want to try and add some, like, um, kind of small kids toys to a painting, um, and, like, googly eyes, and just, like, there's loads of stuff I want to add that I think I need to get a glue gun for, just so that I can fix stuff on. Um, I also do... I've gotten a lot more into collaging recently, so I also do um, sometimes use like um, uh, photo, like my personal photos, um, and um, I used I used like stuff that um, like inspirational, like motivational cards that I had, um, and like just other random stuff that I had had saved that was kind of in like a like like a box for you know if I was ever feeling down like I would look at this stuff that I'd saved Uh, I put some of that onto um one of my paintings self which was called self-portrait um and then also I also I'm a big fan of finger painting um I've you I've used that technique in countless paintings because I really like how like tactile it is and like how smooth it can make the surface and also um just like the way it like affixes the paint to the canvas like um one of my pieces called neolithic um which was inspired by cave art you can you can really see like i guess now that you know you'd be able to see um you can see like hand prints basically like my hands like having clawed it down um the canvas Um, another more random thing that I used and that was sadly a bit of a flop, um, was I tried to incorporate, um, slime into a painting, um, and sadly it didn't really work. It was just too stringy, but I am planning to try again. I think I just need something that's like a bit less sticky, um, because I think it'd be really cool. Um, other random things, I guess, is like, um, like (laughs) sometimes I've used like leaves before to like apply paint like leaves that had like fallen off the trees in my garden and I'm like oh why not um flowers as well like flowers that had fallen off like I'd just like um imprint it on the on the page and see what happened another time I did also um I was painting this was when I was painting um a painting that sold um a while ago called untitled rose painting um, so I was painting the roses in my garden and I was taking a break and the shadow of the rose bush um, cast across 
the canvas and there was like a leaf shape and I was like oh yeah that looks really good like, I should add some leaves there um so I do take mother nature's guidance um other things I've used uh mirrored fragments I don't think I've mentioned um hmm Oh, incense sticks. That was, again, Neolithic. I was burning incense at the time that I was painting that um, because it just felt appropriate. And I used some of the, like, burnt nubs um, to, like, draw on the piece. Um, uh, yeah, that's all I can think of. But I, I really love using unconventional mediums and techniques and I'm always looking to try more. And I'm always looking to combine different mediums. Um, I think that's something that I would definitely continue to do and find ways to do. So, do I listen to music or have any other type of background noise while I work, or do I prefer complete silence? I actually realised, I realised recently that I'm not a big fan of silence. Um, I think, I think for some reason, just having some other kind of sound is really helpful for my brain. Um... Like, I think it, like, almost distracts, like, part of my, part of my ADHD brain and, um, lets me focus, um, in terms of background music and, and versus music, um, I love both of them and I alternate, to be honest, um, so usually, if I'm listening to music, it will probably be whatever song I'm hyperfixating on, um, just over and over again until, um, until I'm like, okay, we need to shift, we need to shift, like, this is starting to feel stale, we need a different song, um, or, and that's often, like, quite, like, electro-poppy is probably, like, my genre of choice, um, sometimes there'll also be, like, if I have, like, a heater on, I really like the sound of that, um, like, I would have it on because it's cold, but I also like the added benefits. I also just love the sound. I love like a whirring fan sound. Um, I really struggle to sleep unless I have either a fan or like fake fan noises playing. Um, and it's kind of the same when I'm working as well. Um, yeah, that's probably it on, on that bit. Oh, wait, no, no. Um, also in the garden so this wouldn't when I'm painting in the garden I really like that and I wouldn't necessarily like I will sometimes listen to music but sometimes I won't um but the key thing is that that's not silence because there's like you know I'm based in London and I'm working in London so you know I can hear like tubes and cars and sirens and birds and stuff and I quite like that because that adds like kind of layers of background noise um that isn't complete silence What's the best reaction someone's had to my artwork? Um, so I had a couple of um, exhibitions at the beginning of the year and one of them, which was actually my first ever in-person like physical gallery show, was with the Holy Art Gallery, um, which is in East London. Um, and it was for their Future Stars uh, Christmas show. And I was there on the, like, opening night, um, and I was kind of near my painting, um, with some friends, and just, like, a stranger walked, was, like, walking through the room and just, like, pointed at my painting and was like, I love that, um, to her friend, and it just made me so happy to hear that because it's like that was completely unprompted she didn't know I was the artist and anyway then one of my friends was like oh my god that's her that's she's the artist uh, and so we ended up talking um a bit and she like elaborated and said she really liked my color theory and just like how colorful the piece was um and that was amazing that's really stuck with me yeah so what I hope that people take away from my artwork is, like, I mean, ideally it would be a positive emotion. Um, I think, like, I really hope that my work makes people feel joyful. That's 
definitely something I strive for. Um, like a lot of it's very colorful and like nostalgic and almost like childlike sometimes and like happy. Um, and I would obviously really love if it brought out um, like feelings of joy in someone or feelings of nostalgia um, which is like good feelings but um, I think just like feeling in general like emotion in general is what I would like people to take away from my artwork because for me the most important um, like quality in an artwork is its ability to like make you feel something um, and for me like what I consider like uh, quotation marks good art is art that makes you feel something um and so that's what I would like my art to do thank you so much for listening to me um my instagram is at Tilly Trevitt and my tiktok is the same uh, my website's also just tillytrevitt.com um <clears throat> I don't think I currently have any events lined up um but hey you know I've been submitting like crazy to stuff recently so hopefully some of those seeds will flourish so if you want to find out um yeah give me a follow and then you'll know anyway <laughs> bye